something you can't fix. If you can't fix what's broken, you'll, uh, you'll go instead. It's Jay and Adam. It's Previewed. It's Previewed's Fix It with Adam and Jay. Peaches, oh, welcome to Fix It, where friends don't let friends fix pop culture alone. I'm Adam. And I'm Jay. And you're our listener. Well, hey there, listeners. Ho oh, there, listeners. Save Martha. Listeners. Yeah, man. Martha. Yes, indeed. It's a, We're celebrating everyone's favorite holiday, where everyone whose mother's name is Martha gathers in the square and they all and they all look at each other in the eyes and become and if they are enemies they become friends and vice oh. versa oh my god yes. it's an axis situation yes indeed it's the it's the Martha swap every year here in Vlisteria that cool. usually happens in Martha's vineyard yeah. <laughs> 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 That's right. Even Blisteria has its own Martha's Vineyard. Yep. <laughs> the boosters are uh, busy. Uh, yes, in the, indeed. In, in the off season. Oh, which, by the way, thank you for everyone who applied to join the boosters last week. Yeah, uh, man. We are overwhelmed Woo! with the with, oh, uh, man. Dude, applicants. Dude, that football's concession stand is going to be st st stocked, baby. <laughs> Hope you like nachos. With the with the good little with the good little jalapenos. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, we, baby. We, got, we got enough stuff for jalapenos. Ooh, yeah, that's how you know you're getting yeah, good. That's, mm-hmm. I mean, I you know, because let's be real, like concession stand nachos, not regular nachos, or not. No. But they but they are wonderful for what they are. Mm-hmm. But they're their own thing. It's Absolutely. like how grape soda. Love grape soda. Does it taste like grape? No, it does not. They're totally two different things. What were we even talking about? Oh, the boosters. That's right. Yes. But yeah, come out to Martha's Vineyard. Make a friend or an enemy. It depends on the year. Have you ever been to Martha's Vineyard? Yes. You have? I think. Taking the ferry out? I don't remember. I think I might have been a kid. Oh, man. Kimberly and I had one of our uh, one of our only like fights as a married couple in Martha's Vineyard. <laughs> We were at we were at a wedding. Go on. We were at a wedding. Yes. Uh, uh, we were at uh, Justin and Joanna's wedding. Oh, uh huh. And Martha's Vineyard. The king. Um, the king come through. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who've been to Mario Party Tuesday, might know Justin or Joanna. Uh, it's long story short. Long story short. Yes. Uh, we, we just we we just had too much to drink. At the oh. Bar. <laughs> we got into it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, that, yeah, that's that's a longer story, and I we we don't have time for that on the sure. podcast. But, uh, but yeah, show it to my stream and uh, make me tell that story. I, I well, you, you can give me channel points to make me tell a story, <laughs> and I will tell that one. Uh, and I, I get to tell it, so you will hear my version of the story in which I'm right. Yeah, <laughs> as it should be. As it should be. Welcome to Fix It. Uh, this is our podcast. I'm Jay. That's Adam. You may know us from the wildly popular YouTube reaction channel previewed, which we are currently on right now. Uh, it's not a mistake. It's we, not a mistake. We did this on purpose. We did this uh, for on those purpose. of you who are like, wait a second. No, no. This is on purpose. We're trying out something new. Um, honestly, it's been working out great. We've been getting yeah. uh, more views on the podcast, and it seems like it's pumping up numbers uh, on the audio platform as well. So if you've uh, seen this through our main channel and have uh, subscribed uh, through uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, thank you very, very mm-hmm. much. We really appreciate it. And for those of you who have been here all along, oh, geez. That's right. The boos- booster's blessing upon you. <laughs> oh boy, you just you just yes, cranking indeed. out the yes, lore, indeed. baby. Yeah, if you've been here for if you've been here for long enough, you know the secret code that the murder macaws will pass your home. <laughs> yes, they circle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is our podcast, Fix It, where every week Adam and I pe- take a piece of pop culture that maybe missed the mark, maybe didn't quite get there, maybe just had a mom named Martha, and we fix it. And today we're going to be fixing uh, the, t- it's 2015, I think it's 2016's Batman v Superman, colon, Dawn of Justice. Dawn of Justice. Colon, colon, too many titles. Too many titles. Colon, trying to do way too much in one movie. This is the second movie in the DCEU. This is the second movie. And this movie came out swinging. 
like we had seen 14 of these things. Yeah. They were, they were laying groundwork being like, remember this thing? It's like, we never saw that thing. Cool, man. Great. This is a backstory we know nothing about. I'm just going to walk by the bat suit with all the ha ha ha's painted on it and look real mad. And you guys don't even know what I'm talking about. You guys haven't even met this universe's uh, Joker yet, but that's fine. We'll just mosey on. We'll just, we're just gonna scooch by. Just gonna scooch by. Just like a just like a polite Midwestern dad trying to move through a crowded bar. Just gonna scooch by. Just gonna. Oh, oh. Just, just gonna, just gonna. So sorry about that. Oh, yeah. I've never run into one of those. I mean, I'm slowly turning into. Yes, one of you those. are slowly. <laughs> Bud. <laughs> Yeah, here I am. You are. Here I am. Yeah, I tell you that. I'm going to scooch by you. Oh, do you? Let me just sneak by. Let me just steal one of those. You've never said that. Yeah, I have. You just don't listen to me. What? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But before we get into uh, fixing uh, the wildly flawed Batman vs. Superman. (laughs) That's a fair assessment. um, We are going to be moving into my favorite segment that I like to call Roll for Convo. And Adam likes to call that too, and you guys at home like to call it that too. Not just me, in case you're wondering. Uh, it's a it's a segment where Adam and I w- we deepen our fellowship as friends and as content creators and as business partners and as uh-huh. lovers. And oh boy, <laughs> oh, de- yeah, Jay's making up lore again. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, our producer Brian has given us twenty topics of conversation, uh, and I'm going to roll a twenty sided die, bingo, bango, bongo, right here, and uh, we are going to pick whatever number on the list that I roll. And rolling, Ooh, that was a good roll this time. That's a good roll. That is a gentleman's eight. My eight. Friend. Do you have a favorite book? If so, what is it? Truly, if you put a gun to my head, oh well. Uh, mm. Why can I? Why is it? What? <laughs> I I know I have a lot of things like colloquialisms that I say. Yes, and I have a patter to me, and I and I'm aware, and mostly because pe- I can tell that people in my life start saying them, i.e., you. Uh, and, and Kimberly, for that matter, and but also, also i.e. now them. That, yeah, the, the people, it, either uh, people in the Discord community, if you haven't joined the Discord, uh, check it out, discord.gg slash previewed. It's the best community on the internet. But people is. on the Discord mm-hmm. start saying things yeah, that I yeah, say, yeah. but also people in the comments saying, Jay has got to stop saying writ large. He has got to stop saying that. <laughs> really? <laughs> I do like saying that. But oh, okay. uh, that, yeah, that comment got under my skin and writ large. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the boosters on you. Uh oh. My cause! Uh uh but uh, what was I talking about? Uh, I'm always you said gun to your head. Yeah, I am always and- in a situation where it's like when people are like, hey, tell the truth about them. I'm like, well, gun to my head. There's a lot of pe- a lot of imaginary people putting guns to my head making sure. me make decisions so what you're saying is you basically walk around thinking that like you're on the po- the poster for john wick 2 yeah pretty much cool. <laughs> hey uh, waffle fries waffle fries or regular fries well gun to my head like no there's no guns no gun please just, just please sir pick a french sir. fry sir pick a french fry that's all we need i have two i have two favorites two favorites okay okay one is a childhood book Sure. And one okay. is like an adult me book because I feel like there are, t- you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Um. Well, I. But all and also there's like a third like series. So I mean, we can all it, the Dresden books. I love the Dresden books. It's, so this conversation is going to branch out from a, just a, a favorite book, and we're going to uh, clearly branch into other th- things we like about books, right? Yeah. Books. Books. Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Uh, America podcast. Uh. My childhood favorite book yes. um, is, it is a Roald doll book, but a lot of people are thinking I'm going to come out swinging a fully wonk on the chocolate factory. Not so much. The book is fine. I like the movie better. Um, but it is another Roald doll book, and it is Danny and the Champion of the World. And if I ever get, like, if I ever get access to, like, real production money, and I have to get to option a book property Mm -hmm. that is the book property that i would like to option because i think it's like a slow burn it's a lesser known rolled doll book it's just about us it's about a kid and his dad and they poach pheasants uh off of like these like evil like rich guys property Mm -hmm. and it's about him and his dad like kind of getting one over on these like kind of evil rich dudes 
and that's really they like don't have a lot and like they're kind of poor and so like they're doing this to kind of just get by and that's really it there's a lot more to it than that obviously but sure. it's just like it's just a wonderful story of of a son and his dad and it's a great it's a great little book now adult jay it's high fidelity man it's high fidelity oh it's a book nick hornby is oh yeah yeah it's a very good book oh okay it's a very good book it's a great film it's an even better book wow yeah um it's uh the only the only the only movie that has ever been better than the actual book itself Mm -hmm. is fight club okay because fight club the book is only okay but that movie like transcends it anyways but yeah it's high fidelity and danny the champion of the world my two favorite books okay yeah this one is not necessarily as hot and heavy as the fry as the fry debate no because it's not really debating about no <laughs> unless you were like i hate that book and here's why yeah, here's why Holy- oh okay what's your favorite i've never book? read this book so i don't know yeah i don't know yeah you should read high fidelity it's good although it is the main character figuring out that maybe he's the problem so i think you might hate that book no no i mean I, there's a lot I've, i went through my own self-discovery stage of life but that okay. was before i met you so <laughs> yeah now it's, everything is locked in sorry bud <laughs> 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 I have made all my decisions. Yeah. I have pushed the little tab down on the SD card. There will be no swapping. <laughs> I'm fine because a previous Adam put in the work. That's fair to for me to yeah. be fine. And so there, there will be no, there will be no alterations into into until, ad, it. until such time that there needs to be. But at the moment, <laughs> I'm I'm good, man. Oh man, I, I you, the, your self confidence really is something to behold, and I really appreciate it. What's your favorite book? The uh, Bible. <laughs> you know, I tried reading that. Uh, it didn't, you gotta, get, it dude, didn't get very far. It, it, you got you got to numbers, and it all fell apart, right? Oh no, yeah. I, I started at um, the only ex- part I thought would be exciting, uh, which is um, the New Testament, the last. One where all the- you started with revelations. Started with revelations. Why would you do that? Because I heard good things. That's like that's okay. What? Yeah, because like it's exciting and it's the end of the world and stuff's happening. That's and, like, like the most cryptic one of them all. Clearly, it's really yeah, difficult really, to read. I, yes, it was. And I was like, I'm, well, this, I, I, the ending sucks. I'm not reading the rest of this book. But why? No. The, Away. What? No. Are you just trying to get a rise out of me right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> actually, well, I'm it's not. Working. I'm not actually not. You just read the. It, that's so telling. Anyways, what's your favorite book? Uh, I Jedi. Okay. It is. Uh, a, it's a parallax book to the Jedi Academy trilogy, uh, where corn. It's a corn horn book, but it's all in first person. Okay. So corn is just narrating how he goes about the adventures in parallel to what's happening in the Jedi Academy trilogy. But he talks about how this is how the force feels. Oh, okay. And this is I was like, <gasps> yep, this it's awesome. He's like, this is how I'm building a lightsaber. Like, yeah, man, this is really yeah. cool. And Korn's powers are different than everyone else. Cause he can't do any TK abilities, but he has total he, kill. Right. You know how Jedi's can kill total kill. Yeah. What's TK? Telekinetic. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but he does his lineage of Jedi. Uh, he's able to, like uh, what Vader did at um, at Bespin was when Han shot him. He just absorb block uh, or absorb okay, the shot. Okay, okay, okay. The horns can just do that. They can just absorb I thought, I think energy. If you, I think if you talk to George Lucas, he'd be like, "Oh, it's a robot hand. So why would why would it yep. hurt him?" You prop and I, you know what? You know what I mean? Probably that's probably that's the probably, actual answer. That's probably and that's my favorite thing about Star Wars is that it's just like it is. Have you seen the John Stewart interview of oh of him his, asking, yeah, like, "Don't hey, make it up. What are we doing? Where's, no. yeah. yeah, don't make it up. He asks, Stop it." For those of you at home who don't doesn't know, there's an interview where John Stewart asks <laughs> he asked George Lucas where is obi-wan from and george lucas doesn't know (laughs) and not like oh i forgot it's i have never written that nope so he tries to make it up on the fly Yep. and john calls him on it immediately (laughs) and says stop that it's just like don't uh, no no 
No, no, don't make it up. What are you doing? Stop it's it. It's just Stop. a sweet man who had a really good idea, and he's just like, you guys have so many questions. <laughs> like, he's just he's just from the hip, just throwing stuff out there, and we're like, all right, well, this is canon now. Like, <laughs> that, that That's why George Lucas sold Star Wars. He's just like, they just... They want to know all this stuff, and I, what, what, what like like J.R.R. Martin? No, no, thank you. No thanks. Did, J, did I say that right? George R.R. Yeah. R. Martin. George R.R. Martin. I, yeah, there we go. I combined J.R. Tolkien and George R.R. R. Martin. They're very different. Yeah, because one of them actually finishes a goddamn series. Uh, you, we still have that bet going. I don't. See, he's not finishing. He's not going to finish the book. No. He's not finishing he's not the book. Finish here. He's not going to finish it. Yeah, there's no way. Um. So it's I, I I Jedi all the way. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it, and it was just like just a different. It was the only first person yeah. book in the EU, at least that I'm aware of. Yeah, and it was from with my favorite character. So that was great. What did you did you like? Did you enjoy reading like as a child? Like nope. into no really? No. Oh, I love I love reading. I did read as a child, but I I couldn't. Well, because what happens is. Okay, everyone, it's time to read out loud in class. Oh yeah, and so Ooh, that's where that's I, where Chaboy shined. Yeah, <laughs> and where I like yeah faltered because yeah, like uh oh because words and because the way especially how and you probably are f- fully aware of this as we've been doing this for a long time. You know how like I some like Sheldon's dad killed himself. Like I how I like to yeah I like the patter of words. And so, like, I like to talk really fast because it feels good. I just kind of like, blah, 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 blah. yeah. That's not how I read. I read real slow. Yeah. So there is a gear shift problem between how my brain yes. is reading. You have dyslexia, and I Lashy. can't say the words as that fast. Yeah. Or I want to, or I want to talk fast, and my brain can't uh, absorb the words as fast as my mouth wants or to go. I read like lightning. So, yeah, reading out loud, like, oh, I can't do this. I'm going to make a fool out of myself in front of everybody. And, you know, any sign of weakness for kids, get them. Yeah. So, yeah, I I, read, I did read a decent amount as a kid, but, like, I then I stopped reading until I got the oh. Timothy, Thon, Timothy, Timothy Zahn trilogy Oh, as a teenager. I thought you were about to say Timothy Oliphant. No. And I was like, what did he do? He come and teach you how to teach you. The, oh, he's he doesn't hey, do anything. Kids. He just he's just an attractive man. He's yeah, like, look at that guy. You know what? Look it was supposed for him being like Reed. Yeah, you know, yeah, this? pretty yeah. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be like, oh, that's him with the old fan. I want to be like you, uh, man. I, I, I mean, I, I read, read the Phantom Toll Booth and the oh, and, and you know those uh, those oh, collections of things I or whatever. I love the Phantom Toll Booth. Oh, oh, what a what a spec what an esoteric nightmare for children to read. But what a spectacular book, like. The concept of there's so many like that book is so conceptual. Like I reread that a oh, couple really? of years ago. Oh, okay. And it's like, oh, this is they they let kids read this. I this don't. Is I don't remember a lick of it. A lot. It's like it. it Phantom Tollbooth. It re- almost like ends up kind of like a a wackier, more uh, academic Alice in Wonderland. Like it's a little bit more huh. freewheeling with its like concepts, but like it, I guess it feels a little bit easier to read because sure. it's. But man, oh, I love that book. But what's did you? What was your favorite book you read in school? Like, what was the favorite book you were assigned? Oh, like, did you get into any of those? No, absolutely not. No. I ha- I hated being assigned reading. Uh, oh, and for the main reason, this is what I was going to bring this up. I did you have to read? Was it in your curriculum uh, that you needed to read uh, Flowers for Algernon? Um, I be- uh, no, but I read that independently, and other classes were assigned it, but we didn't do that one. I read The Giver like four times, because we moved a lot when The Giver was assigned, so I had to read The Giver a bunch. Oh, I never read that one. Um, oh, it's good. It's good. Um, I've, I've, I've made peace with it being an okay book, because I had to read it so many times, I was pissed. Oh, okay. I was like, what, they're assigned a book I already read, Mom? She's like, just write the paper. I'm like, no. Or but just take the paper. You don't like Flowers read. for Algernon? Dude. That I read it maybe like when I was like in third or fourth grade, like that book messed me up. Like I still think about it to this day, and there's a part of me that's like I really wished I never read it. Oh, cause like that's. But at the same time, I was like, hey man, that's a really good book that it, it's impacting you decades later. Yeah, that's, I would say it's evo- that's, it's that's clearly a, evocative, uh, evoked something. 
Yeah, but definitely they invoke the, well, I now have a fear of that. What, of being a mouse? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, Jay. That's exactly the fear I yeah, Man, came so away afraid? from. Yeah, every time I bring cheese over, you like freak out. <laughs> I don't like it. I hate it. <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah, man. I've seen that little wheel you run around on. I've seen it. You're trying to hide it. Dude, if I had it. Yeah, man. One of those little. What, from, uh, what is it? Uh, the human hamster wheel, man. From the Adam, old daredevil. I'm aware, I'm aware you would love a human hamster wheel. And I'm aware that if I could just hang water up with a little ball, you would just be like. Yeah. I know. I know. It's not. Man, I read I, I I read pretty voraciously for a long time, and I've gotten honestly as an adult I've gotten into audiobooks a lot lately. Sure, because I can, I just straight up just don't have the time anymore to like sit down and physically read a book. But I really like, I really like listening to an audiobook. Um, you like the stories? I like I love stories. Yeah. And I like uh and I like doing that like when I'm doing stuff around the house and I like I don't know it just like feels part of it. But man, I read some. I got really into the the uh, Ender's Game books. Um, okay, how in far high did you school? get? Oh, in high school, I, I got. Let's put it this way: I got far enough that I read. I wrote in ninth grade. I wrote a book report on. Uh, uh, what's the name of the? It's the one after Flowers for Algernon. It's not Flowers for Algernon. It's just, you know. You know how you, you know how flowers. Well, I mean, you're not far. Like you know, you're not far. The se- the second <laughs> book is about people being turned into trees. Yeah, man. So like, you, well, uh, well, it's the third. Uh, Xeno, Xeno. Uh, it's not Xenomorph. Is what I yeah, but it's yeah, it's the yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the one where the all the the pig people are turning into trees and stuff, and how they're like communicating through the uh, psych- psychic network through yeah. the galaxy, and you know. Yeah. And his older brother Peter is like evil president, and it's like, and I and I, uh, xenophobia is the name of the book. Is it? No, maybe it's not. I don't know, but it's yeah, xeno something or whatever. Those uh, books are freaking. Like, I wrote. I, I wrote. It's the only time. It's the only time I've ever got it like an A plus without just really. Uh, well, not the only time I got an A plus, but I got an A plus in that my teacher went. Uh, because there was a verbal component mm-hmm. to the present, and I like explained like what was going on in the book to her, and like what some of the themes were, and she just like kind of looked at me and looked down at my paper, and she went, "Yeah, I believe. Yeah, you. Yep. And this is kind of everything that's in this essay." And I was like, "Uh huh." She's like, "Not cool. gonna, I'm not read, gonna this. read this. I'm not gonna read this. It, yeah. I trust that you read this book and understand it, but I don't. That is." It, you need to know that that is kind of incoherent, and I was like, "Yeah, it gets it gets really off the rails." It does. She it was like, really "Oh, that's does. the Ender's Game book. That's one of the things." I'm like, "Yeah," and then it, and then it gets really political and really psychedelic, and it's not. But yeah, I, got, I really loved that series. Why can't I? think? Because it's I don't even I think it was like Flowers for the Speaker of the Dead was the next one Speaker of the Dead which then, is the one with the people getting turned into trees and then Shadow of the Hegemon. No, that's Beans. No, that's sh- that's Ender's Shadow. Yeah. Isn't Shadow of the Hedge Edgemon like the last one? That might one be after eight. that one. There guys, that like it's the Ender's Game series is much like The Matrix in that like that first book is magic and then it goes off the rails and I still show up every time. Really? Oh man, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would get it when I liked something. You know, when you're a kid, when you like something, you're just like, I just like this. Yeah, and I don't have time I mean, that's to why find something I, that's else. That's why I just I inhaled the EU. Like oh. any, like I yeah. knew I knew when the books were coming out. Like yeah, as soon, as the, inter- as, soon as the internet it was a thing, I was like, I could look things up. I was like, when is the next EU? Because that's when the Vong War hit. Like, when is the next book? Six months, mom. I want to go to the you know, Barnes and Noble on this date. Get that. I don't care if it's hardback. I want. I need that next book. Yeah. So were yeah. you the only? Were, were there a lot of other people there to pick up the book? Or like, did you go to midnight release or anything? No, that stuff didn't happen until Harry Potter. That's true. That's true. Did you ever get in on that? On that hysteria? No, that was after me. Oh. Okay. I didn't read Harry Potter until way later. Yeah. Did you also like resist it for a while and then kind of get into it later? Uh yeah, I'm like this is kind of stupid, right, everybody? And everyone's like, "No, it's not. It's pretty great." I'm like, "It's pretty." Did stupid. You say so? Yeah, it's stupid. I I didn't. Yeah, I I read Harry Potter after it was all done. Oh, yeah, I got in after the third movie because I was like, "Oh, this is good," 
because I went I went on like just a, like a lark. Sure. So I'm like we're gonna see Harry Potter, and I was like, I got nothing to do. Sure. And it was like, oh, I actually, this, this magic is, and whimsy. Yeah, man, whimsy. And look at all you these children being in, in abject danger. Abject danger. Well, I think I think that's been a rule for convo. Reading, reading, get, f- book figure, it, figure it out. Hey guys, hey, are get, you in the and you want to read? Get, Do you read. want a free pizza? We'll punch your card, and you can if you get three punches, you get a free personal pan pizza. Book it, book it. <clears throat> Everywhere has book it. It's much like the Morphin Grid. It, per- it permeates all. If there if there's anything that every fictional universe has, it's the Morphin Grid, it's the Phoenix Force, it is American Christmas, and Book It. <laughs> I mean, of, of all the things that are universal constants, hey, that's I'm not bad. I'm just saying, get your D&D characters to read a couple of books in some of the downtime, yeah. and if you show up to a fantasy pizza hut or a hut of pizza... A witch's a witch a witch's hut of pizza, you'll get a free personal pan pizza. David, if you're listening, make that happen <laughs> in bonus action, please and thank you. All right, uh, I think we should move into Batman. Versus we Superman. should move into Batman v Superman. Who boy? Yeah. Uh, first things first, though. I think before we get to the thing, we should probably do the plot drop. Yeah, we should probably drop the plot because you know we we watched it last night. Yeah, and. I, and you had already watched it previously, recently. So this is your second I watched, watch. This is my yeah, my second watch through. Because I watched the I when the first movie came out, I was like, I think I like that movie. And then the, everyone was like, that movie was not the best. She was like, you're right, it wasn't, but I think I like it. And I was like, hey, there's an extended cut there. What? This movie they cut what? Because this movie had a lot of flaws. Like yeah, it did, but like yeah. they added the half an hour they cut out. You should watch it. And eventually that came out on some type of streaming service or somewhere. Yeah. And I f- watched it. I was like, oh, yeah, this movie's a lot better with all every th- all the plot points in it. I mean, it's still not great, but everything makes way more sense. Yes. But, yeah, I mean, there are some people in the watch along that were really mad that we did not watch the extended cut. And I, appreci- and I appreciate that they were upset. Yeah. And I get that. It was also an extra but half this, hour. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, there was it was, it was that. I, I, part of me was like, it's three hours. I, I've been here with the baby all day. I, I don't. But also, <clears throat> just for the nature of this show. Yes. I was like, <clears throat> I would like, I'm going to, I want to fix and I want to approach this with the movie that was handed in front of me. Mm-hmm. Because of the amount of people that saw this movie, I would argue that maybe 10% of the people that saw that movie have seen the extended cut. Yeah. Like, it's just not what, <clears throat> it's not what we were given. No, it's not. And a lot of people are just like, <clears throat> well, I'm, and, and Brian can tell <clears throat> us when we go to him for uh, those bean facts. But everyone's opinions of this movie was pretty much set from the standard edition. Yeah. And a lot of people are just like, you know what? I mean, this is, I guess, okay, but like, I don't want to watch this again with another half hour. I does, yeah. that, that's not going to change my opinion about this movie. Yeah, it's still kind of just. I eh. think I think the battle lines are like pretty like set in stone. People either really are meh about this movie or are really into it, and there's like not a lot of in between. Like, I don't, I don't know of anyone that like really like. I was like, no one really hates this movie. I, most people I've talked to were like, yeah, eh, it got some things right. I got a couple things but right. But plot drop. Hit us. What plot happens drop. in this movie last I'm going to try to be as succinct as possible because there's, so, there's much so much this movie tries to do. But here is the general plot. We're going to just do the plot first and then we'll layer on the other stuff. Unbeknownst to everybody going on in this movie, Lex Luthor wants to uh, pretty much drag Superman's popularity into the mud so that he his company can get a contract with the government to basically kill him. Or get Batman to kill him. For reasons. For reasons. We don't know Lex's motives. We're never really told. It's just like, it's Lex, L- Lex Luthor. You guys know Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor, right? He hates Superman. So he hates Superman. Th- don't worry about why. Because you just, because he does, right? Everyone yeah. knows that. So it's fine. Yes. So there's a just huge convoluted plot through like mercenaries, international intrigue, Superman like saving Lois, but like that messes up. Uh, an Af- an African village or something that like the U.S. Congress then like gets rah, rah, rah. it's this whole long big thing yeah. that everyone's supposed to hate Superman and specifically Bruce Wayne or Batman so Batman wants to kill Superman and so Lex can like 
When they could have just spun it that he destroyed basically an entire city fighting Zod. Yes. So it's a that whole... could have been just it. It's a whole long convoluted plan of Lex trying to manipulate everybody in so that Batman will fight Superman and hopefully kill him. Yeah. That is basically the plot. It's not told in a linear fashion. Yeah. We don't get a lot of motivations of why things are happening. But the way it's told is we start with... The ending of with the Zod battle, the first movie, mm-hmm. and Bruce is there in in Metropolis trying to save his people who were. I at- actually loved that. Oh, that was a great intro. But like Bruce is very wary of Superman because of what, the destruction of Metropolis. That makes perfect sense. Yes. But then, Batman's just doing stuff and like trying to solve a thing. But it turns out he's just trying to find Kryptonite. That he doesn't know he's gonna find Kryptonite. No, he yes. doesn't know he's gonna find Kryptonite. And then he wants to, he wants to just straight up kill Superman. Yeah. Because he's a, he's an older Batman, and so he's at the stage of his life is like, you know what? Um, Tower of Babel basic storyline. What's my contingency plan? You know what? I just need to kill him. There's no contingency plan. If he goes rogue, it's just he's just gonna go rogue. Yeah. So I'm just gonna kill him. And then eventually they realize that their moms had the same name, and they're best buds, and they thwart Lex. And then Superman dies because they also crammed Doomsday into this movie. Mm-hmm. And also Wonder Woman. Um, so that's the basic plot. The things they crammed on top of that were, okay, Wonder Woman's in this movie so for some reason. Also, Lex has been spying on all the future members of the Justice League and how somehow he got all that CC, like closed caption footage or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it's Doomsday? Sure, why not? Uh, also a mother box and somehow Lex was also talking to Apocalypse. Apocalypse? Apocalypse. So like, or no, or, or I guess, uh, what's this, whatever the, the bad no, guy from. No, it's Dark Side. Uh, no, it was, but I mean, no, it, I thought it was the guy who actually comes to Earth in the Justice League movie. Whose name I don't remember. Oh, uh, Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf. So like, but there's all these things that are just layered into this movie Oh, and there's also a giant philosophical debate of if ba- if Superman's a good a source of good, a force for good in the in on the planet. Yeah. The the problem is it's just people saying negative things about Superman. Yeah. No one ever stands up to be like, well, you know, he, you know, saved stopped us from drowning. He saved the village. He did the thing. Like it's just like, no one is actually outright saying good things. He we see him doing good things. Like he yeah. does save the people from a flood. He does save the person from like a, a factory burning in Mexico or something like that. In the but most Zack Snyder sequence it's of so, the entire it's movie. It's so creepy. It's creepy. It's creepy. He saves it's, the person. It looks like he's starting a cult. Yes. Yeah. Instead of just like, thank you, Superman. Like, you know, and then he says, you know, he's speaking Spanish and like, and, you know, moves, you know, goes away. But it's just like, it's just, it's just, they're trying to have this cool philosophical debate. And I love that philosophical but no debate, debate. But there's no debate. It's just, he's bad. And he needs to be brought to heel somehow. Even and we when don't that trust guy him. comes so in, like in the wheelchair with explosives on it and blows up everyone in Congress, they're all like, "Well, Superman could have stopped him." I'm like, "That's not <clears throat> that that guy is the terrorist." Like maybe Superman. Like I, I feel like the, the the PR on that is like, "Hi, I'm Superman. I was just coming in front of Congress. I wasn't sorry. I didn't check him everyone for bombs immediately. Like I thought we we're gonna have a civil discourse." Um, and you forgot the most important thing that Holly Hunter's in this movie because why not? I, mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, Batman v Superman. Batman v Superman. Um, but before we get into our uh, discussion, we should probably hear from our producer Brian. We probably should. We probably should. He's got a lot to tell us. He's uh, he's a wonderful producer. He's an extraordinarily smart lad. He also. He's on my list, and he knows why. He's on like the top five of the boosters list too. Yeah, oh, they're, they're just waiting <clears throat> for the go. Keep, I've had they're they, just waiting. They for the have their orders. Co- yep, they have their orders. You know, they're not going to step out of line unless I say so. The macaws, however, they do as they will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just that you know, I they take suggestions, <laughs> but that's about it. Um, Man, there's a lot of people that are tuning in for the first time and are like, what the? What? There's Why a lot of content. Go check Go check out the Fix It channel. Deep lore. There's a lot There's a lot there, you guys. Um, uh, but Brian, tell us about Batman versus Superman when you roll that B 
beautiful bean fun fact footage. Thank you, gentlemen. Producer Brian here. Today we're trying to fix the 2016 Snyderverse installment, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Directed by Zack Snyder and written by Chris Terrio and David S. Goyer, this movie stars Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, Amy Adams, Jesse Eisenberg, and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, this movie cost around $325 million to make and made $873.6 million. Now here are some fun bean facts. All of the casting for this movie, well almost all of it, was highly criticized, especially and mostly Affleck. It's V, not Versus, because Snyder wanted to, quote, keep it from being a straight Versus movie, even in the most subtle way. Okay. Joker and Riddler were originally supposed to appear, but they were cut from the script. Now, the assumption from both fans and critics was that Warner Brothers rushed to this movie because they were trying to catch up with the MCU and get the moneymaker Batman back into their DC movies. Um, as the boys mentioned, there is an extended cut of this movie called The Ultimate Edition. Uh, it's 31 minutes longer and rated R. Character development basically stays the same, but it cleans up the plot and makes it more intelligible. And if you care, this movie has a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 2.4 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Now, going back to the role for Convo conversation, in terms of movies being better than books, I'll throw Jaws into the ring because the movie Jaws is way better than the book Jaws. Also, I have not listened to the boys' fixes yet, and I'm recording this before I do that, but a part of my fix would be that you don't focus on this older Batman's parental grief. It's still there, of course, but you build this aging Batman up from the death of a Robin. He doesn't want to work with anybody ever again except Alfred. He's angry with himself for not being able to protect that Robin. His obsession with the Joker is worse and even more dangerous, and that's where we meet this Batman. Enough with the parents. We, we've seen that. He has new trauma after doing this for so long. Then adding in a Superman with, quote, hope uh, is way more interesting. Also, I need to mention that when Lex is watching the other Justice League members on the CCTV or the computer, whatever that is, they already have branded logos in the folders. Um, Okay, I guess his marketing team is very busy to brand all of the Justice League. Anyway, back to you, gentlemen. Great job, Brian. Well done, Brian. Thank you for all those beautiful bean facts. There were a lot. And how? This movie, there it was a lot. This movie was a lot. This movie was a lot. I okay yeah Jay I've been thinking a lot about this movie since watching it sure I don't hate this movie I think there's a lot of there's a lot to enjoy I mean cinematically and visually it's a feast you can't argue sure. with that yes. Zack Snyder always gives the goods when it comes to the shots for your eyeballs absolutely like, I appreciate the, the way we get our heroes and the way that we get them. I think Henry Cavill as Superman is incredible. He's fantastic. He's wonderful. I like Batfleck. He's great. I think some of, if anything, I wanted more Batfleck in mm -hmm. this. Jeremy Irons is Alfred. Yes, please. Fantastic. Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. Amazing. It, it, there's just, there's a lot to like here. I even like, I even like Lex in this. You're absolutely fundamentally <clears throat> wrong on every level. That's fun. Jesse Eisenberg brought this movie down. Oh, I. I oh my God. I. I think. I, I think the lack of, really, where this, where the rubber hits the road for this with me, is that this movie packs so much, and it. I feel like it alienates its audience, because it requires, in order to like fully grasp this movie, I feel like it requires a literacy of DC Comics that most people don't have and it requires it, it it assumes and hints at a lot of backstory and a lot of choices that a we don't remember like they they hearken back to man of steel so much that i was like no one really watched man of steel that hard dude like we didn't we weren't paying that close of attention zach it's not that and it's also that movie was not the wealth of backstory that you think it was no it was not but also you are just going to in media res give me batman and expect me to hop on board and not just have questions about okay so how does this batman work i want it like 
I you don't can't know. He's just... been working for 20 years <clears throat> and lost to Robin, so he's all sorts <clears throat> of just... <clears throat> yeah, you can't just... With a, with a character like Batman, th- it wasn't enough. It wasn't even close. It's not even close. Like, I would argue... I would argue that, like, I, you, I know you don't really love the Wonder Woman aspect of this movie, and it could you were like, it could be written out. I think they give us just enough of Wonder Woman because we knew there was a movie coming. Oh, sure. But, I mean, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot's amazing. Like, she, she's crushed every appearance she's been as Wonder yeah. Woman. It's just that she doesn't do this movie any favors. No. The, the time spent with her could have been time spent with Bruce. Yes. Or... Or Superman. Because it is Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Not then, Batman versus Superman. And also their their friend Wonder Woman. I mean, that's the thing that ultimately, like, I'm the more I watch this movie, the more I'm just like, this is so frustrating. This is so frustrating. Batman and Superman is one of the better bromances yes. in comics. Uh-huh. They are very good friends. Yes. Because they know they're very different, and they earned they earned that but they friendship. earned that friendship. Yeah. This movie, I feel like a woman. So I can change my mind whenever I want. Um, is just they just wanted Batman and Superman to fight, so yes. like we're just gonna make them fight. And I was like, hey, no, that's not how this goes. For me, it is it is when it becomes apparent that Batman fighting Superman is just part of Lex's plan is where it completely falls off the rails for me. Yeah. I can, I can understand. And I thought that's when they, that, that intro is killer, man. That's like great. Bruce being there and trying to get all these people out mm-hmm. and dealing with the ramifications of that city. Like, I was like, when I even when I saw it in the theaters, I was like, oh, oh, they're actually, they're doing this. And also their comment, and a lot of people had the comment after Superman, like, he probably accidentally killed a lot of people. Like, it is, there is, there could be a huge philosophical debate here. Yes. That could have just been the thing. Mm-hmm. And the, the, like the moment when Superman... Like it basically like kind of crashes Batman's party and it was like the next time they turn that light on like don't show up like this is my only warning I was like oh this would be awesome if this came from anywhere it just drops out of the sky it drops up. it's like he saw one news article and was like oh I hate you now yes uh, you better not show back up or I'll rip your head off nobody like, what the hell Superman. Dude, that's not truth, justice in the American way. Like, you're gonna have a conversation. Yes, you gotta they have a don't conversation. Have a conversation. They don't have a conversation. And even in the extended edition, we actually follow Clark to Gotham, and he it, it talks to a couple people to get more information. It's like they just are just giving him inf- talk, talking about the bat. Like, oh my god, the bat guy. I was like, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. In this universe. Yeah. Of which, Clark, you've been here for 30-ish or so years. Yeah. For 20 of them, <laughs> there has been the mythos of the bat yeah. operating in Gotham. Yeah. You're telling me you're only realizing this now? now. And oh, by the way, Gotham... You're a, you are an investigative <laughs> journalist. <laughs> Gotham, which in this universe is right, right across, across the, the harbor. River. It's the Brooklyn... To Metropolis is New York. It's get, get right get out. out. Get, get out of here. Get, get out of no, here. No, just, just no. Just get out of here. I under. It's like put for convenience. Nope. Get out of here. I also just don't believe that Superman wouldn't. I I don't think Superman at that point at the very end wouldn't have ju- like would have seen Batman as a threat, and wouldn't have just tried to reason with him, being like, hey, here's. Here's what Lex is having me do. Yes. You're a crime fighter too. I don't agree. I don't agree with your methods, but like, can you help me? Yes. Can we figure this out? Yes. Also, Lex just threw Lois off a roof and Superman just showed up. He just knew that was happening. That, and then was, all of a sudden. A, the previous scene, he was on a mm-hmm. mountain, right? Wasn't he talking to he his, was, his, like, he mentally was talking to his dad? In Siberia. He was. It was. 
God knows where Superman was, but he just shows up and finds that Lois is in I mean, trouble. it was neat. That he, she's falling, and then, like, f- with her hair just kind of obscuring the camera, all of a sudden, he's just kind of high. Like, whoa! The Bat computer found Martha <laughs> in literally 15 seconds. It was Alfred going, beep, boop, boop, up, oh, here she is. Like Found su- that guy's cell phone. Nailed man, it. Nailed it. Like, super. It's it's ridiculous to me. Yeah. However, however... It's fun with Superman Batman fight. I like it. The, sure. the gear was cool. The I mean I mean the suit busting Batman suit, pretty cool. But I liked it. But it, it wasn't earned. Nope. Would would it have felt better if it was actually earned? I think so. If there were actual but then, if there were actual stakes. But then Batman ties his grappling hook to Superman's leg and just swings him around, and I was like, this is stupid. This is stupid. I, I, Bruce Wayne would have just absolutely stabbed this dude and we would have moved on. If like he really wanted to kill Superman, he would have just absolutely murdered well, Superman. That's the strongest grappling gun in any DC universe. I understand, but he built a weapon to straight up murder him Yes, and then they danced around for 25 minutes. Uh-huh. It's... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, I mean, also a because... weapon that could be thrown. Hey, soups, you didn't need to go to your death. You could have figured it out. You know what you could have done? You could have taken over for uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. You I'll could've... take the last one. Hey, hey, and let's. Here, you're really good at throwing these <laughs> hey, things, right? You know how your whole culture revolves around throwing spears and having swords and stuff? You know how martial weapons are like your whole jam? Here you go. How about you murder this? evil ninja turtle you know how you know how lex built he looks like a ninja he looks turtle. like slash he looks like slash the ninja turtle my favorite thing about watching this movie is that kimberly was sitting right next to me oh no you and, ruined yeah, it dark side dark side or you know slash the turtle was like you know smashing stuff up and kimberly just goes why doesn't you just chop his head off and i go what are you talking about she goes they just, they just chop his head off and I went, Kimberly, the guy just absorbed a nuclear bomb. And they're just going to chop his head off. She's like, they could just chop his head off. <laughs> and I was like, okay. She, she chopped his hand off. Yeah, she did. So, I mean, it, it, that's literally what she said. She chopped his hand off. She went, see? And I was like, you're right. They should have just chopped his head off. Should have just done the atom. We're like, I'd like to roll to chop his head off. I rolled to decapitate. <laughs> Combat just started. <laughs> yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> but he's got a head and my sword's really big. You just would always get so wrapped up in the narrative playing D and D, and they'd be like, "Oh no, this is also a board game. <laughs> <laughs> this is a board game. <laughs> you have to. There's math. <laughs> that was very sweet. Wait, but the math part is very sweet. Um, yes, the whole if the more we're talking about this movie, the more I'm like, oh yeah, I, maybe I hate this movie. It's it, there is a lot of very interesting things that happen in this movie. There's a lot of good dialogue in this movie. There's, there's a lot, a of, lot good, of good performances. I was just about to, there's a lot of good performances in this movie. The problem is that this movie does not transcend its all the, the successes that it has, individual successes. Yes. Nothing co- nothing's cohesive in this movie. Yeah. Well, and it just it just everyone is doing the best they can, but like it turns out like Lex is the secret villain the whole time. Like the this yeah, no. uh, Lois is chasing this story, and it's all of a sudden oh, it's all ties back to Lex Corp. Like, why was this a secret? Why did this yeah. need to be a secret? Why did he need some type of special government uh, okay to bring in a rock from another? That doesn't just bring it in. Yeah. What? This is this is a whole thing. Like, why? I. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, it is kind I of lo- a frustrating film. The philosophical debate about Superman has was has already been, has already been done in a movie. It's one of the best Superman movies ever been made. It's Superman versus the Elite, which was it's a it's an animated film. It's the animated yeah. version of whatever happened in Truth, Justice, and the American Way. Sure, it is the philosophical debate of like, hey, these bad guys. It's like ba- Superman. Why aren't you more like Batman? You have all this power and strength. All these bad guys keep hurting us in Metropolis. Just Kill them. Yeah. What do you stop this? You could stop all of this. Why yeah. aren't you? And public sentiment turns against Superman because there's a new group of heroes out there being like, hey man, we're, we're taking gonna, the trash. We're gonna out. take these guys out. They they're doing wrong things. 
you're killing people. We're gonna just stop that. Yeah, you and don't everyone's just get like, to do that. Yeah, go for the elite. Woo! And Superman's like, finally, like, you know what? If that, do you really want? Oh, okay. You want, okay. And then, sh- well, Batman doesn't kill either in most in most he, universes. In most universes, so. he does not. But Superman then goes ahead and like, here's. You want me to do this? Okay. Here's what it's like, and shows people what it would be like if Superman did what they were thinking. Yeah. And then I have the governor on for a very specific reason. Like it's really they did a very good job. And at the at the end, it's just like, do you want me to kill him now? Do you want me to do this? And everyone's like, yeah, no. sorry, Superman. You're yep. Yeah, oh sorry, boy, dude. you're you're right. Oh boy. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Everyone, like, it's a really good because it's a philosophical debate told through comic books with comic book action. And but like, no, like, but you know, trans it does translate into the real world stuff of like, yo, man, that was really cool. That's what this movie was really trying for, and it failed miserably because it was a one sided debate. Yeah, but I also think this movie, this movie behaves from ev- from every aspect out of every poor is like pouring out of this movie that this movie feels like and wanted to feel like there were five or six movies before this movie. It's the amount of stakes that they're putting into everything yeah. and the amount of like backstory that they're just like casually brushing past is just like, Oh, but like, yeah, you know, like you know how this is all really important. We don't, we don't, movie. We don't know how important a lot of this stuff is because we've only literally had one Superman before this movie. Oh, you guys know Batman, right? Oh, actually, we don't. We actually don't. We actually don't. We are, as an audience member, just aware of Batman and all of the Batman stuff. So you like lean so hard onto this stuff that we already technically know. I mean, there are certain aspects of this movie like... It, when I did see it in the theaters, like, dude, when one woman shows up, like when you we saw that opening day, like that was cool. Oh, that was sure. cool beans. Yes, it was. That was fun. But then, like looking back, I was like, yeah, but like what? But what? Why? They use her theme song. I believe it was about five times. Yeah. Before she actually drops in to in the fight with Doomsday to say Batman, and that's when her theme hits. And I was like, wait, her theme is. Of the of the DCEU themes, hers is the best. the best. You know whose theme is actually secretly really good? Lex's theme was pretty good too. Oh, it was good. I couldn't tell. Yeah, I liked it. You just hate him so much that you just Jesse Eisenberg's it. terrible. I, I, He's not I, a terrible actor, but just in this role, like it, I don't think it's his fault. I think it's written so po- we don't understand why he's doing anything he's doing. Yeah, like there's no we because we've we've needed a business tycoon Lex in live action. Since they figured that out in the 90s uh, animated show. Yeah. Because Clancy Brown is like the definitive Lex next to uh, Michael Rosenbaum. They yeah. Cr- they were crushing it. But like, we needed that in a I live action this... movie. And like, we got evil douchey tech bro. Which or... could have worked because it's, it's, I felt like what they were at least trying to do was a believable Lex Luthor in, in cor- the corporate America that we understand. Now. Sure. It made it made sense. It's just more you have a character that wants to kill Superman because he wants to kill Superman. Well, because all all powerful all powerful can't be good, and all and good can't be all powerful. Which is an interesting ideology and is an interesting choice for a character. But you're not giving me the why at all. No, or it's just at like all. my dad hit me or something as a kid. And I was like, that's okay. terrible, and that's, that's awful. But I I feel like we needed Lex's origin. Yes. Like, we didn't need Bruce's origin at the beginning of this movie. Yes. If anything, we needed Lex's. Yes. And also, I think it probably, I think it hurt the movie that this Lex is not charismatic he's at just, all. He's he's a he's a total douche. He's, yeah, like, he's annoying. He's I just think, annoying. I and think it, this it, movie. It's just frustrating because Lex is usually like, like an actual, like, actual player. He knows what he's doing. He's very confident. Like most good villains, they're almost... I mean, that's why... Like, let's be real. The relationship between Clark and Lex is why Smallville works. Yes. It's the only reason. Yes. Other than that, it's kind of like, okay, are we still... We're still in small... Oh, we're not? Oh, what? Okay. But but these guys, are they going to kiss? Maybe they'll kiss. 
There's always that, you know. Everyone's, sure. I'm sure there's probably some fanfic out there. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know the one thing we forgot to talk about this entire time about this movie? Yes. The time travel. Oh, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> it's frustrating because it's cool. It's frustrating. Is it? It's the the standalone scene seeing Batman like that? Yeah. It's cool. What the hell is it doing in this movie? It was also in the... It's, what is it doing in this movie? I don't know, man. It's not connected to anything. I don't know. It's not connected to anything. I don't... Yeah. Zach, what are you doing? I don't, I don't know why the whole plan was like, hey, you got to keep soups from going evil at some part. At some point in the future, he's going to go evil and side with Darkseid. I don't. Why? 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 This is the second one. It's, yeah, it's the second. Are movie. you high? Why are you even teasing that? That's not. Why would you even? That's not. No one wants to. That's not a, a decent plot hook for like the future of movies. Of I like, don't want to see. How that does movie. Superman go bad? Can they stop it? That suit's cool. No, no. Though. He looked cool. What's this normal suit? Yeah, but he had the goggles and the. Jacket. Oh no, Batman's suit looked cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah Superman's yeah, like, cool. I, what, I don't. This doesn't. And then, and they did it again in Justice League. Yeah. In the Zack Snyder cut of it. Yeah. I. It's not. Superman going evil is not as cool as people think it is. No. At this point, it's rote and kind of boring. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have my own theory on that that you don't like me talking about. Because Superman's just not a very good character. Ah, they've done a really nice job. I think that that's, I mean, rewatching through Man of Steel, uh, you know, and kind of enjoying that movie and, and I under, understanding what they were trying to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I think they did a nice job of, you know, it's it, it speaks to Henry Cavill's performance, but I sure. also think that, like, they do a really nice job of humanizing him mm -hmm. and uh, and giving him, an, uh, having a more understanding of why he does what he does. Yep. And what that means, mm -hmm. and that like Superman like is is his own is his own arch nemesis, in that like he is so powerful. What what am I supposed to do with all this power? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing, and that's compelling. Um, but then the answer at the end of that movie is just oh I will oh, yeah well the answer is I will break Zod's neck and destroy literally an entire city doing it. Oh yeah. okay. I look forward to seeing what James Gunn does with the character. Yeah. I have to feel like he's going to have a much better handle on... Let's talk about Clark having all these powers. What lesson does Clark learn through these two movies? That's a very good How question. How does Superman's character evolve in any way? How do any of these characters evolve in any way? That's a very good question. They don't. They don't think they do. They don't. They just fight and fight and fight. Fight, 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 fight. They get into interesting thing, interesting scraps. And do interesting things. And they pose like panels from uh, like the, the Dark Knight Rises. Like the post credit sequence. What what was the point of Batman showing up and then not branding Lex? What was the point? The bell has been rung. How do you know? What are you even? Yeah. What are you even talking about? What are you even talking about, Lex? What are you even talking about? Because it's not showed in the movie. Yeah. 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 movie's frustrating yeah you know i had a good time watching it but it was now that i'm, now that I'm talking yeah. about it i'm just like kenny kenny more and more frustrated and i think i kind of just draw the line i was like I, I just don't feel like we're we're not given we're not given people in these movies and i understand that that's part of the dc kind of vibe i understand that their their characters are gods but like th there was a specific moment where uh i really liked when ben affleck was talking to jeremy irons and he was just like well we're, we're criminals Alfred. And I was like, oh, interesting. What an interesting take on that character. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. You know what would have been great? Let's let's expand on this in some other scenes in those 10 minutes that you go into the future for absolutely no reason. No reason. Like, let's... I'm, I'm fascinated about, like, where, where is our Batman now? And where is our Batman ending up? Because... Uh, yeah, yeah, you really... Yeah. Yeah, this one really, once you put a microscope to it, it completely falls apart. Uh, we should probably fix this thing. Huh? We need to fix this thing. Yeah, we need to fix this thing because I'm just getting more and more frustrated. Don't, I'm sorry. I don't want you to be frustrated. No, it's quite all right. Uh, I'm 
I'm gonna go first. You know what? I never congratulated you. That was your most concise plot drop of all time. Thanks. That was really good. I was actually I was trying very hard to be like mm, squeeze about. No, you squeeze really did. You really smooshed it real good. Good job. Sorry. Thanks. Because the I think because I really needed to because this is so convoluted and so when it's really simple. When it is really when you take a step back, look at it, it's like what just happened. Yeah. Lex was trying to manipulate everyone the entire time for reasons. We don't know because for reasons we didn't see his origin. So yeah. okay, I guess uh-huh. sure. Yeah. Okay, so there. W- my fix is basically I'm going to take some of the good stuff that was in this movie. There mm-hmm. is a decent amount of good stuff in this movie. I'm going to take that out. And here's the other thing: we've seen Batman's first interaction with Superman a bunch of times. In the 90s cartoons, in comic books a bunch of times, in the different animated films that have shown up over and over again. Like, we've seen them interact for the first time a bunch of times. We know how it goes. We know the rhythm to it. This movie seemed to be like, I refuse to give you any of those things. Yeah. This is going to be the coolest thing you've ever seen. They're going to fight. They're going to really fight. Like, hey, no. You can have different... You don't need to try to be cooler than what's been in the books. Yeah. Just... These guys are bros, man. Yeah. You or they're ha- going to become they're bros. Gonna be, they're going to be bros. Through this fight. Like, that's the reason why they need to fight. They yeah. need to get it out of their system. Yes. Sometimes you just got to punch somebody. Sometimes you got to punch somebody. Yeah, that's, you know... But sometimes... We haven't gotten there yet, but I'm sure someday one of us is going to... Oh, I hope not. I think we've. I think we're past that. Might be like a nut tap here or there. Hey. Oh, that is, <laughs> sir. That is the quickest way to. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, I've had many friends try to make that a part of the. Oh really? And I'm like, absolutely not. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. that's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never do that. Okay, so I'm just I'm taking all the good stuff out, and like, hey, this is more of a classic. Are you leaving all the bad stuff? You're taking all the good stuff out? Yeah, and putting it in my movie. I, I, I know. I'm screwed. Oh with you. okay. Yeah. Bad stuff away. Good stuff stays with me. Good. And making it more of a Good. kind of in line, but like, you know, similar to what they were kind of go for, but like a little bit closer to, yes, they're going to have that initial like heroes fight each other then realize, oh, wait a second. Oh, our moms have the same name. Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh yeah. You, you have a mom? Oh, that's weird. Oh, I thought you were just an alien. No? Oh, you want to? Eh, hey, cool. You're racing Kansas? Oh, neat. Yeah. Yeah. So here we go. Um, We're going to start uh, the same way. I was like, you know, this, uh, with Bruce running into Metropolis, trying to save the kid. So, like, in seeing the, the ground view of Superman's fight with Zod from the first movie. Um, so, Bruce, because of that, and the movie Jim jumps 18 months later. Mm-hmm. So, like, in that 18 months, I don't know why they didn't do this in the no- normal movie. Bruce is researching Superman a yeah. lot. And he's going to be using Lois's reporting to help him. Because Lois did a bunch of stuff on yes. Superman before in Man of Steel, so Bruce is going to go back and like read all of Lois' stuff and like yeah. try to figure it, and like you know he can hack into the Daily Planet, like find her resources and stuff like that. So while Bruce is researching Clark, Clark is also trying to do a story on the Bat because the public debating or is like debating these heroes and their methods. Yes, because publicly it's like is Superman good? Is Superman bad? And I was like, and some people are going to be like, no, Superman is great. Like those aliens were trying to terraform the planet and kill. All of us. Yeah. What happened in Metropolis was terrible. Mm. Absolutely. We are not forgiving that. But like eight billion lives were at stake. Yeah. It's terrible that you know, however many Showing people died. Showing some reason. Yes. To the situation. But he's, Superman's been out there since that, you know, since the Metropolis incident, like save as many people as he can, do all that stuff. Like, and have we not talked about the bat from Gotham? That, yeah. that guy has been terrorizing that city for years. Yeah. Why are we giving Superman such a hard time? So like the public can bring up Batman. Mm-hmm. So they bring they, they drag him into this debate as well. Yes. So because of that, Clark's like, "Oh yeah, the bat from Gotham. Wait a second, we should check in on that. Let me do let me pitch that story." Which he tries to do in the extended edition, and he keeps getting shut down. Yeah. But in this edition, he's like, "No, no." Yeah, he's what, that's what the story he wants to run because if everyone's talking about it, let's do a story about and it. And if I may, sure. I feel like to incorporate something from this movie, I think it's the evolution of Batman's like MO in that like yeah, he's starting to brand people and that's getting people killed in prison. Yeah. Which he didn't used to do. And so he's not technically killing people, but he's not stopping like yes. He's provo- he's like, facilitating like further justice to happen. Yeah. Yes. 
And it's uh, like, oh, that's a little more sinister. Mm-hmm. What what happened to this Batman to get him here? Exactly. What? Yeah. So uh, Clark's using the story to try to you know figure out like you know with the bat inspires fear, and of course he doesn't want to do that because. He yeah. wants to inspire hope. Freaking yes on the shirt. Inspire ho- hope. It means hope. It means hope on my home cool, planet. Man. So it meanwhile. So you can literally just say whatever. It <laughs> looks like an S. Well, it means hope. So meanwhile, uh, Lex Luthor, who is not being played by Jesse Eisenberg. I do not have another person in mind, but just someone who is a little bit older and a little bit more charismatic and cool. And just like, you know, as a you know, young, we can do Joe young. Joe for grace. It would have been better. Um, I don't know about that. He probably got to pull it off, um, but he's also so he's looking into Kryptonian tech that he can find in all the rubble. Basically, kind of what he was doing in this normal movie. Yeah, but like he's actively looking because like oh he was also impacted by all of this stuff. Yes, and I think you know that, now that we talked about it a little bit beforehand, um, we can also kind of get Lex's origin here in the yeah like maybe he can like be or maybe the scene starts with him like recounting his tale as you know for. You know, as a kid like you know this is how the business started in like some type of interview yeah and then the interview stops and so then he goes off to, to the lab and i was like where are we where, what's the tech out where do we got what's got going on and mercy was there mercy who we sacrificed in this movie yeah unbelievable yeah oh come and waste of a character that explosion and, scene was cool though was cool but just a waste of a character anyways lex is looking for uh kryptonian tech um and he does eventually find uh, access or get you know somebody like Mercy is able to you know, you know black market stuff um, is able to find a deal and um, like some Kryptonian uh, tech like actual like, computer parts oh from the crash site yeah and they go to a, uh, a meet to like meet these you know shady guys to buy the stuff and Mercy kills these guys and gets the tech it's like oh my God, Luther doesn't need to pay it's like Luther he's a businessman Mercy like we're, it means business he's not gonna yeah, pay man. these chumps also just you know and cuts off anyone from knowing that Lex was the one that bought it yeah dead so he acquires his uh, uh, Kryptonian tech uh Clark is doing his best to um oh well, he plugs it in and like realizes like oh this is cr- this is schematics for cr- Kryptonian like technology yeah we've hit the jackpot this is gonna like advance like Lex Corp absolutely tenfold um Meanwhile, Clark's doing his best as a force of good to help people. We're basically going to just kind of stay in America just to kind of keep the story a little bit more grounded. Mm-hmm. Because him being like doing international stuff, which of course he would do, but like it just also but it makes the story more complicated. Yeah. So like let's just keep this simple. Let's just kind of keep him in the borders. Not that he's not doing stuff, but let's just kind of keep the story. Yeah, like- let's make America Superman again. I get it. <laughs> Just trying to make the story simpler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, since Clark and Bruce are both kind of trying to figure out, uh, you know, they're all kind of researching the kind of the same thing of like who who the bat is, what the bat's doing, what Superman is, what he's doing, sure, and finding, you know, and br- bros, both Bruce and Lex are trying to track Kryptonian tech. Yeah, they're all kind of leading towards the same kind of like they're all circling the drain around each other. Basically, yes, and eventually, uh, both. Uh, Bruce and Clark are gonna real are gonna find that people are trading and selling Kryptonian tech or in salvage stuff in some shady deals, and then eventually they're gonna both kind of like find a you know a meetup of shady characters who have black market salvage from one of the crash sites or whatever. Sure. And Batman and Superman are gonna confront each other for the first time. Okay. And so we can kind of see Bruce doing this, the Arkham fight from like act three. We're just going to give it to the people. Yeah. Because it's awesome. And like, it's brutal. Yeah. Whereas Clark comes in and is like a Superman, like he's stopping people, but like, you know, (laughs) not like that. Yeah. So they're going to like fight and like, Hey, that's stop that. You're really hurting these people. Like you can disable them. You can knock them, but that's not how we should be doing this. And he's like, you know, who are you talking about? <laughs> so they're going to confront each other. They're going to fight. And like Bruce is going to be outmatched, but is able to like test some things. Is there is the thought though. Yes. What is stopping? Like, I understand Superman pulls his punches, but sometimes I'm like, what? He just punched him in the chest. How does Superman's hand not go all the way through his torso? And, you know... He's gentle? I under Like, look, I understand these are legendary comic book characters. And I understand sure. that they're part of the Justice League. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. They're in the... They're, you know... They are, they are on the Mount Rushmore of mm-hmm. superheroes. But, like, 
And they're like, oh, man, Batman and Superman, who's going to fight? Who's going to win? Superman. Every time. Every time. Uh, well, what if Batman had the... No, this is just street fight. Batman doesn't have time to figure out all the weaknesses and stuff. Batman is going to get... He's going to get a fist right through his solar plexus. And it's going to come bat the, outside the back of his head. Sure. Superman's going to like... Give that vent, sandwich. We both reach for the gun for all the... Like ventriloquist <laughs> that dude. And it's over. You know? Mm-hmm. I just don't know how he survives. Sure. Anyways. So they're going to have a philosophical debate while they're fighting. I see. They're going to chit-chat. They're going to chit-chat a little bit. All and right. Bruce is going to use his opportunity to test some stuff on Superman. Like his hearing, his vision. Like, think, like what does the electricity work? It does not. Okay. Oh, but his hearing's awfully sensitive. If I get a loud enough pitch, okay, that kind of... But like realizes, I'm out. I'm outmatched. Yes. I. Nope. I got to go. And is able to, through wits... And, you know, some cool gadgets, yeah. obviously, disengage and get out of there. Like, so, like, because it's kind of like, it's this is kind of like um, Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. Remember, they had three fights. Absolutely. And, we, and you know, we saw who kind of wins at the end. Yes, yes, yes. So, round one, Superman. Bruce is like, okay, I got to come up with a better plan for this guy. That did not work. Yeah. But also, because of that, like, they did stop the exchange going on, but, like, it's clearly, this is a small microcosm of something much a much larger case happening. Um, meanwhile, while they are done fighting, uh, Lex is figuring out the computer stuff, and he finds um, like a little thing, like you kind of remember the little like S crystals or whatever. Instead of just yes, 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 yes. he's able to like access one of those things, and it's like, oh, wait a second, the computer's been trying to talk to me. Like you can just see like a computer trying to like, you know, just there's like you know actually beeping and like yes he's like wait a second he's trying to boop 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 oh what's this little crystal oh and all of a sudden we see a hologram appear like we did in the first movie right with Jor-El yes. popping up I loved all the Kryptonian stuff I love that world building I know you don't love it but I do oh the stuff on Earth was fine or whatever but like the Krypton uh, I'll turn he rides a griffin it's so fun weird. but we see like a hologram pop up but we, and we hear a, the, a voice talking to Lex, but we don't, we just kind of see like the legs of the hologram. Gotcha. So Lex is now talking to a Kryptonian hologram. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you actually, I can actually help. I see what you're trying to do. Let me help. Like, oh, bum, bum, bum. So uh, public discourse around soups and Batman are continuing. You know, everyone's like, wow, he's good. No, he's bad. Wah, 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 Batman's like, wah, 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 wah. I do um, something very similar. I think I know where you're going. Uh, Bruce is trying to link the robberies, so he's trying to figure out, like, he's trying to connect the dots of, like, wait a second, there's been some stuff happening in Metropolis and in yeah. Gotham. And, like, there's a lot of stuff from the different ports. What's going on? Clark is already trying to learn about LexCorp um, because LexCorp's like, we have a... We, after um, the incident in Metropolis, LexCorp's kind of come out and be like, we want, as a company, we want to, like, lead the way in helping protect this planet. Yeah. We can protect this country. We can protect your country. Like there's, we are clearly just a small blue dot in this vast universe. There are things out there that we cannot comprehend. There might be other other dangers out there. We want this company is now changing its direction to protect the planet. Clark is just like something. Something doesn't smell right about this. Yeah. And I know something is up because of all these things I've been kind of tracking. I ran to Batman. Bruce starts to seeing the pattern. Uh, meanwhile, um, Superman is trying to use his, he's not figuring it out, but he's using his super hearing to try to like, where is Batman? I'm going to, tr- you know what? I'm going to track Batman. I think okay. he's on, I think he's on this and I don't agree with his methods, but I think he may, you know, he's been doing this for 20 years. I think he might know something more. Okay. So, uh, sure enough, uh, Superman does eventually run into Batman as he is about to, um, stop this next big like shipment yeah. of gear that like this you know like you know the classic 90s cartoons of all these yeah. things of, like oh technology place is a beginning hit because like people need yeah. like, special i mean that was basically like every flash oh, episode man, the shocker showed up and yeah, stole, stole all stole the... the stuff or whatever yeah um so that basically that's going on so, so uh by the tashi station and steal all their power converters pretty much yes exactly so um Batman's kind of figured it out, like, he's kind of starting to figure out, and he has a guess as to, like, wait a second. If these parts are, I got a sneak suspicion that, like, this might be the next thing that they hit. Turns out he was right, and Superman was able to use his hearing and stuff to track Batman. And so, this is going to be the fight. Yes. This is the middle of Act 2. This is the big Batman-Superman fight. Yeah. Batman, this time, is prepared. 
He had he was all all the tech and stuff that he used first time. I was like, hey, that didn't work, but I had another idea. That now um, I didn't have it on me last time because I didn't think I was going to run into him. But now yeah. that I'm just out there, like I made sure I had this. He's got a little kryptonite ring because, or at least there's a little kryptonite on him because there's no way that Lex Luthor would be the only one to find this stuff in yes. 18 months. Yes. Because if Bruce was actually worried about this stuff, Wayne Tech is the same size or bigger than LexCorp. I would say Wayne Tech is more savvy than LexCorp. So he would also be out there trying to figure this stuff out, trying to find what he could. And if Lex could find a little sliver, so could Bruce. <clears throat> yeah. And he wasn't sure and he didn't have it on him the first mm-hmm. time, but now he does. And so now the fight's a little fair because it's not gas. It's just has a part of it. You know. I don't know. I thought it was pretty. Uh, it was cool. That was pretty evocative. But he had a lot to work with. But this I also th- feel like, again, he would have hit him with the gas. Superman went down and then it was like, here's my huge spear. Stab. I, I designed a, from a bodily perspective, a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just going to like, we're just going to, I'm just going to gas you and then punch you. No, sir. You just want two in the head and you know they're dead. <laughs> Works with a spear too. Ugh. So this is the big fight. This is way more even this time. The ring is equalizing everything. And the ring is more comic book accurate. It has more comic book accurate and Batman's going to win this one. Superman realizes like, I don't know what that is, but this sucks. I got to go. Because uh, he's getting his ass kicked. Yeah. Um, and, and unfortunately, they were more worried about fighting each other and the tech got out. The yeah. tech got taken. Uh, and with but, the kryptonite, it's, an, it's like, oh, I, I'm a better fighter than you. Mm-hmm. Like, take away your powers, I kick your ass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but before uh, Clark is able to bounce, he does take a peek under the hood, because he can do, he can with the, uh, the yeah. x-ray vision, sees it as Bruce Wayne, and uses that as like, okay, Bruce, I guess you win this round. Stuns Bruce. Yeah, and then he dips. And he dips. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. So, the next, so since it kind of ends in the draw, but Batman totally won that. Uh, Lex is making progress on his project, um, and it's, lo- it's looking like we see more of the schematics now. It's kind of looking like he's getting, he's making a mech suit, kind of very much like that classic Lex Krypton or uh, Apocalyptian um, power suit that he has in the comics, or yeah. he had like the, you know, the the Super Friends cartoon back in the day. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, and he's also, uh, and he's talking. To, he's also talking to the, um, the AI or whatever the uh, the, the, the system. I yes, the you. system, the the hologram or whatever yeah. that he unlocked. And this is like, oh, you know, this stuff's already close to being done. But you know, what we need a power source. But I, I actually know a way to, uh, you know, make some. It runs off one of the materials from our home planet. Gotcha. Um, but the, we were in the process, the, the, the ship was in the process of making it before, but we can actually, we can just do that now. Yeah. So we can make our own kryptonite. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, Clark is talking to Lois about Batman and being Bruce. Oh. And he's like, I don't know what to do with this information. Like, this guy needs to be Shouldn't have told blow. Lois. She's uh, going to uh, blow it. Uh, oh, uh, man. But that's when, when they're having this conversation kind of in, in secret, like I have the da- at the Daily Planet, uh, Bruce Wayne shows up. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> He was like, oh, what's going on? And he beelines right for Clark Kent. And they start talking, and there's like, wait a second. Um, there's like, I don't, what's, it's not double entendre, but there's a, it's a very, like, because that's... Uh, it's it, it's um, the true co- dramatic irony. Yes. Yeah. Of like, does... Both of them know, but they're not Bruce saying no. And uh, yeah. But he's clearly letting on that, yes. Yeah, he figured it out, too. Yeah. Um, you just put on glasses, dude. It's so not that hard. And also, he, he snuck a beeper or you know a, a tag underneath his coat cape during the fight. Oh, there's also that. But I, that's the joke, though. It's like, oh, I just snuck something under your cape. Also, you just wear glasses. glasses. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not that, hard. not that, not that. Now hard. that I've seen you up close and you know punched you a bunch of times, I yeah. yeah. Well, Kimberly even brought that up while we were watching it. She was like, "How do people not know that he's Superman?" You, I was like, "I think, I think it's just you hide in plain sight, and people can't even fathom mm-hmm. that someone that works at a newspaper would be Superman." Well, you know, he did. They did do that when the first movie came out. Oh yeah, I guess. And no one, he walked around, you know, with like a camera, you know, across the street or whatever. Henry Cavill just walking around with his shirt kind of open, with the Superman shirt on, glad, you know, but normal Clark. Nobody. Huh. 
Yeah. After after the movie has been like you know to- heavily promoted, like, yes, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a big thing. It's coming out like next yeah. week. Nobody. So I was like, hey, maybe it's possible. Yeah. Anyways, I think it definitely is. They they talk. They, they kind of like they finally kind of hash it out and be like you know over lunch or whatever, something like that. Like, hey, paninis. They have paninis. Sure, why not? We're riding it. They're gonna have delicious paninis. Um, but they they talk it out and they kind of figure out like, like a Tuscan like, chicken situation. <laughs> like you know. They didn't realize something like a spicy else. Is- ha- like a mm. like a Cuban, like a, sure. a ham. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So they finally talk. Like a caprese, just mm. just mozzarella mm-hmm. and tomato, a little balsamic. Ooh, woo! Ooh. Anyways, I've done my three. I'm not okay, gonna okay. give. I'm not gonna hit you with another panini. So they talk or a burrito. So I can have. Oh, I love would love a burrito. <laughs> So they finally talk and realize that something's going on. Their methods may be different. But it was Josh the whole time. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> but as they're kind of like realizing they should be bros, and they're on the same side, they get an announcement that LexCorp is having a big press conference because they have something to tell everybody. Ooh, he's going to tell. He's, he's going, going to tell. tell. He's going to tell. He's going to tell. And they realize, okay, we need to. We should. We should team up. We should be a team up. Yeah. Something's going on with Lex. We need to stop it. Yeah. So. Because the they've both been doing their homework. Mm-hmm. A couple days Do later, your homework kids. A couple days later, we have the big conference with Lex, and he has this great speech declaring that, like, you know, humanity first. We don't need alien interference to, like, you know, reach great. You know, kind of the anti um, speech from what uh, Jonathan Kent had, like, you know, one day, or you know, Jor-El's speech, right? Like, you know, one day you'll you know, you'll lead them to the sun. You know, like they may stumble, they may fall, but one day they will join you in the, in the light, right? Yeah. This is Lex, kind of no, no. We don't need some We're good here. We're good. We can handle this on our own. We don't need some outsider. Yeah. We don't need some rogue agent coming in here telling us how to do things. Yeah. He's we, not from here. We can do this. We don't need help. And yeah. th- so like and and we're going to and Lex Corp will lead the way with our new and this is kind of like Tony's armor, uh, you know, suit of armor on the world type of plan. Yeah. And the mech suit Iron Man's on top of Lex. Oh, okay. This is the prototype. This is, you know, this is, you know, this is how we're going to protect everybody. Are we going Metallo or are we going Brainiac? How are we doing here? So he has his big speech. Oh, look at all the cool stuff this can do. And Clark starts getting, because it's been powered by Kryptonite, and he's making a couple blasts, and Clark starts feeling really bad. And Bruce clocks it, and he's like, oh, wait a second. That suit's got to be clearly powered by him. The same thing that my yeah. ring was, because it's having a similar effect on Clark. And so after the presentation happens... Um, and, you know, usually the you know the um, the design of his armor is usually with like kind of open face. Like oh, you're doing like the full on like the lex. Oh, cool. The, yeah, it's the lex. That's like, cool as hell. Yeah, okay. like we're gonna have other robots and stuff, but this is like a suit of armor no, I that like can it. take on a Kryptonian. But it looks that, like the that, lex. Yeah, like the, but it looks the like the typical yeah. lex suit. That's cool. And lex is nor- like the normal the normal way the suit looks is like there's no Iron Man helmet. It's just his he- head's out, but like protected by a force field or whatever. But so you can sure. see his face. Yeah. So lex is giving the speech or whatever. And like, ha, the presentation's over. Like you. You can depend on LexCorp. Does she have, does he have a mask? Can it look like a like a like a like a spooky goblin or something? No. But That's as so he's done with stupid. his speech, his shoot starts to sh- his suit starts to shake, and like that is some, hard to say. It's hard to, it's hard the to suit say. starts to shake. The suit starts to shake. Hello. The suit starts to shake. Huh. And all of a sudden, a helmet encloses Lex's head, and on the forehead. Are three, three, dots three dots arranged yeah. in a triangle formation, yeah. and Brainiac announces his presence on Earth. Rad. So the boys regroup. Uh, Brainiac goes to one of Lex's fabrications, and this is kind of and basically the uh, Act Three of Avengers Part Two. Uh, Avengers, well, uh, an Age Act of Three of any Brainiac yeah. story. All right, let's make more Brainiacs. Ma- ma- make more robots. We boys regroup. They figure out a plan. They got you know. It, Brainiac goes to one of Lex's fabrication factories, build an army of robots. Um, big Act Three fight. Batman does rad cool stuff. Yeah, Superman you know, does rad cool stuff. Everyone, they're they're tag teaming. They're doing great. They yeah. are able to pull Lex out of the suit and they're like, "Hey, you messed up, and you got to help us stop this." Um, he eventually does. They use teamwork and friendship. It's really awesome You've seeing these guys actually work in concert against you know actually like doing tag team moves instead of just like fighting a big giant thing separately because like the big fight with doomsday they were all kind of like just doing 
one thing. Oh no, absolutely. And not like they really weren't working, working as together. a team. No. Even like when Wonder Woman had him in the lasso, he kind of broke out of it before. Yeah. He got. There. And I think the argument will be made like, oh well, they're learning how to work together. I don't. Okay. Yeah, they are. But like, sure. But they're. He's really good. He's got superpowers. And like, she's good at spears. And we have a spear <laughs> that will win us the fight. But I'm gonna sacrifice my life. So he shouldn't have been able to fly while holding that thing. Shouldn't have been able to he fly. Shouldn't have been able to fly. Shouldn't have been able to fly. That was a staggering amount of kryptonite. A truly it was metric only a couple feet shit away. ton of kryptonite. <laughs> and he was like, I can fly a little bit. No, you can't. You got <laughs> hit with the gas and you were I'm, out. I'm, I'm good. No, no. You Officer, get hit with, I'm good. No, you I'm inhaled fine. a I'm little fine. bit of it. <laughs> Now, granted, it was like, you know, it was basically like kryptonite asbestos. So, like, I'm not, I feel bad for you. But, like, you you were out so long that, that Ben Affleck was able to wrap your leg with a grappling hook and swing you about. Yeah. And then you're going to pick up the most kryptonite <laughs> we've ever seen in a thing ever. And then fly. No, thank you. Hard pass. Ugh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lex helps. Uh, Brainiac's defeated. But, Brainiac is the right move. But Brainiac is able to ferret some code away. Oh, he of is not truly defeated because that would be wasted. No. Brainiac's a good second villain because it's like, hey, more information of open to Clark about Krypton. Because I think at the you know, and like I think I didn't write it down, but like Well Brainiac is also a good he's just a good character for the development of Superman. Yes. Because he cause sometimes a villain, he's sometimes an ally. It kind of mm-hmm. goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Like it's a good Brainiac is like is one of the better. I understand Lex is like the you know he's the on the rush. He's the goat, of, yeah. But like, but Brainiac is like actually a very good Superman villain, and he does not have many of them. He does not. Like, I think Clark has access to more Kryptonian tech to be like you know like he should have a fortress. This movie jumping right to Doomsday is like terrible. So, is absolutely so buck wild. Yeah. It's such a. It's so insane to me. Mm-hmm. It's like when it was very similar to like when X Men just did Apocalypse out of nowhere. Apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's just, just like, like yeah. oh, the, all of these movies should have been building to a. You can't just do Apocalypse. You can't just do it. It's like oh, like oh, we have Mister Sinister. You, you need four movies to build a Mister Sinister. Oh, and He's, then in that Apocalypse movie, they just said oh, in Phoenix. Like p- oh wait, yeah, p- wait, please wait. huff huff my butt. You got to build to that please too. Please and thank you, huff yeah. my butt. So they defeat Brainiac, but he's still out there somewhere. Of course. Uh, the the bromance begins, um, and in the post maybe we can work together. Yeah, in the post credit scene, he invite uh, Bruce invites Clark over to the cave and is like, "I have actually been doing a lot of research on you for the past year and a half, yeah. but you're not the only one I was researching. Yes, I found a few others. Yeah, and we see yes those clips there uh-huh. because Bruce should have found the footage. Yes. Of the other potential leaguers, not Lex. Are you are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Is Bruce is not inept? This movie kind of made him inept. Yes. I know. <laughs> it's really terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Jay. Hit me. All right. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. I did something a little weird for my fix. For my fix. This is not, and he told, he promised me this was not a joke fix. This is not. It a is sit- not a. Jo- this, this is, is not a joke. Just, fix. This is not a sitcom. This is not a joke fix. We've, done, you know, <laughs> I, a, I try is... to keep those, you know, when they've really earned it. Um. Uh. Okay. My issue with this movie at the at the end of the day, yeah. is that this movie was timed from a release perspective so incredibly poorly. And I think there are certain aspects. I think this movie and the story that they gave us, if we had had enough runway to earn all of this stuff, mm-hmm. I think a lot of this could have worked. Yes, it could have. If we had enough and knew enough of this world, mm-hmm. because this this movie like weirdly kind of feels very lived in, but it's but it's it, like this movie is the girlfriend that wants wants to move in after dating for a week. Ah. Huh. I'm like, yo, well, that, yo, red flag, red flag, yo, we barely know each other. What's my middle name? Oh, that's right. Martha flag <laughs> on the play. <laughs> I was about to say, you don't even know, but then I was like, yeah, it's, oh, Mar- it's, it's Martha. Martha. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you got to save her. <laughs> so I, I, instead of rewriting this movie, I wrote, I rewrote the lead up to this movie and kind of. I built a DCEU 
lead up to Batman versus Superman. What it would have Justice. taken what to it, earn the to movie, earn we, this the movie, movie we that saw. we got. And I do some interesting from fun things. Hey, that's a great idea. Man of Steel is saying exactly the same. Sure. Most, and that is mostly because we have already fixed that movie we did. on this podcast. We did that. And <laughs> we did not, a good job. I was not wasting any time. No. <laughs> We've already fixed it. The next movie to come out after Man of Steel is Batman the Gotham Knight. Ooh. Uh, the villain in this movie, the like our our we have two main villains in this movie. Okay. Um the main villain of this movie is we are introducing Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. And Harley Quinn is causing chaos in New York City because she is trying to liberate her boyfriend, the Joker. And we are introducing, as much as I hate to say it, Jared Leto's Joker into this franchise as well. Sure. Because this is going to fix some some situations and other movies coming up in uh-huh. this lineup as well. Uh-huh. Um, Harley Quinn is, she is teaming up with uh, some, some of the other, uh, uh, some other of the rogues gallery, and she is causing chaos in New York City. This is more of a character piece about the Batman that we know. We are going to get a lot of flashbacks, and we realize that this Batman has we are dealing with a batman that has already lost a robin right we're gonna get all the flashbacks of losing robin Mm -hmm. all of the it's gonna be a lot of like like the main plot is part of it but this is also like a lot of where our how our batman got here yeah and this movie is meant to bring is meant to rise the question of uh uh what did i write down um uh, we see a Batman who is now having to relent and go into more like drastic measures in order to stop the chaos in his city. Mm-hmm. And we see him having to make go further and further into parts of Batman that he does not want to go. And this is chronologically after Man this of Steel. This is chronologically after Man of Steel. Okay. Um, or like maybe before. It doesn't it doesn't totally matter. Okay. If I'm being honest. Sure. Uh, let's say before only because I want to, s- let's say before because I want to keep the scene. I really liked Bruce Wayne being in Metropolis. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we are seeing a uh, leaning into the line that I mentioned that I liked earlier of like, we're criminals, Alfred, mm-hmm. and him realizing that like maybe he's the problem. And uh, we're, we're getting to the point where, uh, Batman is realizing that he can't do this by himself. Um, and that's really what we're setting up. We see a Batman overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. We see a Batman rising above and overcoming, but barely. Um, we're also in this movie. It's Harley Quinn, but we're also, uh, we, uh, the whole time, uh, cause Batman and Harley kind of have a back and forth. Like they're not exactly enemies. He's right. like, he's like trying to stop her. He's like, we can't let him out. Like, you need to understand there's a lot of that, like, that psychology going on. But all the while, Batman is also being hunted by Deadshot. And we don't know. She, Harley doesn't know why he's there. Batman doesn't know why he's there. He's just, like, there are times where Harley and Batman are going back and forth, and then they have to start dodging Deadshot because he's trying to kill both of them. Uh, we find out at the end of that movie after both of them are defeated, that Deadshot was hired and it was like an audition process for Amanda Waller. Uh huh. Um, uh, so at, at the end of that movie, Joker is, gets, is freed and Harley is capped. I, I think the tail end of this movie is that Joker gets out and he basically like trades Harley for himself. Basically. Mm, yeah. It's like, it's really gross, really toxic. It's not awesome. Yeah. Um, because I like I like that we as an audience in this universe l- like and uh, like we sympathize with Harley. Yes, that is important. Yes. Um. Okay. Uh, the post credit sequence of Batman: The Gotham Knight is uh, Batman gets his like his flash back uh, vision. We get like a alternate Flash coming through. Oh. Okay. And what alternate Flash says to him is, you have to find them. And then he's gone. So we're kind of getting little flavors of things to come. Okay. Um, that's that's a, it's, it's a but better it's not, mid-credit scene. Than it's, a, it, it's an it, alternate. It's yeah. an alternate Flash. Um, 
the third the movie coming out after Batman the Gotham Knight is Superman Secrets of Krypton. Ooh. We're getting another Superman movie yes. before this all goes down. Um this movie, like we were talking about, is a Lex Luthor started starting movie. Mm-hmm. Like we see Lex uh we see Lex Luthor um we get a setup of him with his dad and uh, what's the, the the main drive of that scene is that his dad is a complete and utter douchebag mm-hmm. and really wants is very frustrated with Lex is that he is not towing the family line and trying to rise above to run this company when he takes over oh. and is too focused on the research of the company. He's okay. like, Dad, like the research of the company is like saving lives. He's like, there are things that I'm developing here that are going to like save and help humanity. And then the building is almost completely demolished. Superman, super like the yep. Superman Zod fight obliterates LexCorp. Lex survives miraculously, yep. but all of his research is destroyed. Everything he was working towards sure. is destroyed. His father is killed. Yep. Lex has to rise to the occasion to run LexCorp and and bring LexCorp back from the, back yep. from the dead, mm-hmm. basically. Um, and obviously becomes obsessed with destroying Superman. Yeah, um, and rightfully so. That makes sense. Yes. Um, and, uh, Lex becomes obsessed with developing technology, um, to, uh, deal with Superman, obviously. And he's like, hit the whole line is that like, you know, do we, we can't, we can't base a national security budget on the whims of a high, of, of a godlike alien. Mm-hmm. Like we need to be ready for these kinds of things. I understand he's a good person, but like, you can't just trust that, um, and so uh, uh, he basically gets himself let into Zod's crashed ship. Sure. We're doing that a little bit earlier. That makes sense. Um, and uh, doing some of like the earlier research, um, uh, basically it, Lex finds Brainiac. We're just, I'm. that's kind of the same. That's the logical leap here. Yes. Um, Brainiac is yet to be done in a live action film and I'm not but, counting Superman 3. It was not, that no, was not Brainiac. But the twist being, um, Brainiac is kind of in a more benign form at this point. Sure. Like Brainiac is more of a tease and is more of just a hyper powered. Into- He's Jarvis at this point. Sure. Yeah. And, Tony and Jarvis. basically like he, he through Brainiac is basically given like an insane amount of information about earth. And the one thing he finds uh, through like all of these scans of earth that this ship made mm-hmm. is that he happens to find a good amount of civilizations that are extraordinarily deep underwater that no one knows about. And so we get a, um, we get a Lex. Um, oh, we then cut to, yeah, man. Um, we see, uh, we see, uh, th- uh there are attacks happening in metropolis that superman is trying to face sure we find out that they are coming from atlanteans and nobody is really sure no one's really sure what the tech is nobody's sure who these people are are they aliens is this happening again what's going on nobody's sure but they all think they're aliens it makes sense. Like, why they, wouldn't they, they look alien they don't, they're not from this planet hmm. obviously we have an alien um long story short um uh basically we, we find out through scenes that lex uh basically like has uh he basically blackmailed the atlanteans into giving him tech for all his like soup buster suits sure in in exchange for not telling everybody about it and them uh basic like and them causing chaos in metropolis and giving him a reason to be able to like employ his suits and so uh superman uh, figures out what's going on and uh, travels underwater because he can do that and meets up, uh, basically meets up with a, with Atlanteans and our good, they're like, they want nothing to do with him. They're like, we already, like, we've already, we're already being blackmailed. Like, you need to get out of here. Like, you can't help us. Um, and then on his way out, he runs into our good buddy, Arthur. They make a deal uh, to kind of like save the day and uh, we get Aquaman for the first time. We get Aquaman and Superman, and they end up defeating Lex. Cool. Uh, there, there's you know, because reasons. Yeah. Um, but the ideological pull away from this movie is that 
uh, people were really like the the walk away is that people were really into the way that it spun him defeating like all of Lex's robots and things like mm-hmm. that are that like people don't trust Superman. They were like, so Lex was just building robots to maybe like keep him in check and he just destroyed all of them. That doesn't. And also the, there's people in the water now. We need help more than ever. Yep. Um, yep. And also, and also that would inform their distrust of the of the surface world even more in Aquaman. I'm not covering that in this. Sure. But that would inform that yes. way more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. If Orm's the one in charge, um, then that would definitely yeah help him be like we should take them all out. Well, somebody came down here to man- try to manipulate and blackmail us. Um. Yeah. Um. The post credit sequence of this movie mm-hmm. is that Brainiac scanned something in Atlantis, mm-hmm. and we see a mother mother box, and uh, Brainiac is like, "Would you like me to send this information where it normally goes?" And Lex is like, "What are you talking about? No, I do not authorize that. But where is it? Go- where would it go?" And Brainiac is like, uh, "Like insufficient data." And he's like, "We'll figure that out." Um. Ooh. Next movie leading up to Batman vs. Superman, Wonder Woman. Yes. I'm keeping Wonder Woman kind of uh pretty much the same because it's a great yeah, movie. Yeah, it's, it's a great movie. Um now, the things that I'm changing about Wonder Woman. We are getting the information and the lore dump about mother boxes in Wonder Woman. Oh, the concept wait, wait, of them defending wait, wait, wait. a mother box is a large amount of the reason why our Amazons are staying in Themyscira. It's like they're calling to be there and it's the reason that they're so defensive about the place is that they have a higher calling to like them defending this this artifact Mm -hmm. is maintaining the stability of this world and so like that's part of the reason why they are so intent on staying like this place staying secret is protecting the world which because i always i was like man they're so protective over this place for no reason it's really weird um now um when Trevor eventually lands in Themyscira, uh, the reason that Diana leaves is that she, uh, there's there are ideological differences between them. Is that like she's like we can't just stay. Like if we want to protect the world, it's not just about staying here. Mm-hmm. Like I need to go out and like help people. And they they obviously are like this is help. Like you don't understand. Like this is helping. Like just staying here and Guarding, defending yeah. this land mm-hmm. is hugely important to the success of the human race. Um, but, uh, Trevor, it's Trevor, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tre- when Trevor arrives there and they like kind of start their little relationship, um, Trevor, uh, accidentally stumbles upon like where they're keeping the mother box and sees it. Um, and, uh, once he's captured, they're like, he's seen, like he's seen entirely too much. Like, I don't think they want to execute him at first. I think they just think he's a fun little distraction. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, well, you know, we can magically wipe his mind and send him on his of way. Of course, yeah. Deal. But once he sees the box, it's over. They're like, we have to kill Trevor. And they're like, and she's like, nope, bye. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why she uh, decides to leave. Because she's like, this has gotten completely out of hand. But uh, the one scene that I'm adding in is that when Trevor, um, uh, when, when Trevor is in the box with the mother box, uh, in the... Room of the mother, room box, of the mother yeah. box. Wow. The room where it happens? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a alternate flash uh, pops in. <gasps> and is and for this time, he like speeds in and it's he's just like, you're not, you, how? You're, you're a man. Huh. This isn't safe here. And then he's gone. And so Trevor like tries to communicate that, but no one will believe him. Of course not. Stupid man. Uh, but then, yeah, we just keep the movie as it goes. Yep. And then... Uh, but we get a f- like full understanding as to what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, now, um, this is the last movie we are getting before Batman vs Superman, and oh. I think this might be my favorite swap. Okay, Suicide Squad. We've got we've got a Harley Quinn. Yep. We've got Deadshot. We're yep. keeping the team mostly the same. Sure. Uh, but we have a Harley Quinn and Deadshot that we've seen a lot more of yep. and have gotten to know better mm-hmm. and like understand the Ama- the Amanda Waller situation. Right. And we also know that like she's up to no good. Um uh we're getting rid of Enchantress out of Suicide Squad. Yeah, get out of here. Um we are what we are getting 
uh, we are using Suicide Squad to give us the Cyborg origin story. The Suicide Squad is sent to take down Silas Stone and bring his research is dangerous. Yes, it and is. It needs to be, and it needs to be out of off the street and in the hands of this organization. So yeah, Star Labs should not have a mother box. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean that that is tech, that is true, but we're gonna get all we're gonna get a cyborg that is like fully flushed out, fully understood, mm-hmm. and also we're gonna get to see the Suicide Squad try to fight Cyborg, and it doesn't go good. Like I think Cyborg kind of wrecks their shop a little bit, but it gets to a point where I think they're the Suicide Squad with the bombs in their brain and Cyborg scans them. I think. Like they they kind of find a mutual understanding with each other because they're just like we don't want to be here and he's like I don't want to be here I was dead what I I think there is a small amount of team up that uh basic like and uh there is we get a flat we get a full on flash mi- like vision of uh from that the cyborg gets and I think this time it's Ezra okay and I think he's like hey this box real it. Amanda Waller's not totally wrong. This really shouldn't be. You really need to take. You better take better care of this. And so, like, we we will start Justice League with Cyborg just having one of these things and fully understanding what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we get yeah, we get a Suicide Squad that like took care of Cyborg, um, and they're still under control. But we're using Suicide Squad as a Cyborg origin story. So once we move into Batman v Superman, we are getting we have a full understanding of where all three of our of our main characters are going mm-hmm. to be, and then we are going to move through with a and I and I look if we're I'm not gonna I said I wasn't gonna change anything about this movie like I'm just going to lean into the fact that like this was Brainiac is going to communicate this information after this mm-hmm. and it's gonna go to dark side yeah. So like let's party. Like I think if you structure this the lead up to this movie, this movie rules. Like and if we understand where like we understand the distrust of Superman, we understand why Batman like we understand why Batman doesn't trust Superman. We also understand why Batman is trying to find other superpowered people. He was like I can't do this on my own anymore. And so I think there's a certain aspect that like I would almost flip it around. Like Batman is forced to try and kill Superman, but he doesn't want to because he's like, I, we can help each other. Yeah. Because like, I, I want, I want to, I want a Batman who is going to bring together the justice league. I'm okay with him being that character. Sure. But with, with what the character we have gotten, you have got to convince me that this is the guy that is bringing people together. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I think that that is where, yeah, I just, I just want to understand these characters more because I feel like you've cast well, you have shot well, like just, you just timed poorly. Very poorly. Because your plan allows everyone to understand that Lex's first plan did not work. Yeah. And so this convoluted plot of like Superman saving Lois and I'm assuming it was Africa or something like that and like getting the he was con- like all of this stuff to get Batman to do the thing he couldn't do yeah. which is to take you know to take out Superman that makes way more sense yeah than just popping in as a second movie uh-huh and all of a sudden like why is it that one woman oh sh- oh what was uh, here oh no the post credit oh. the post credit sequence I am adding to Batman versus Superman is that uh, Arthur does not show up because he is getting drunk with his dad <laughs> <laughs> the phone rings and he goes nah because we haven't gotten this movie yet. it's like is that Boba Fett <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> alright yeah yeah and then just just to complete the picture here what's next after Batman yeah. I think we move into I, I, I'm okay so with you do Aquaman next I think you do Aquaman and I think you do and I think we figure out a Flash situation you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you need to figure like it's the only miscast of all of that. Yes, it's the only miscast. Everyone does. Man, the Snyder cut. Like I hate, to, I hate saying this out loud because the mo- the majority of the times I've heard like the Snyder cut, like 
of Justice League truly is a much better movie. Oh, it is. Like, yeah, it is. I understand why Ray is so mad at Warner Brothers, mostly because they're racists. But but also, you guys edited like he gave an incredible performance as Cyborg, and you guys took a big old dump yeah, in the did. editing room. He was great. But also, you're racists. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Huh. Hey, man. Who? Brainiac. That's Brainiac the, is that's the right. That's your second villain. Because he's Kryptonian. Because he's Kryptonian. Yeah. And those are the best. And those, he may be a Kryptonian AI. Yes. But those I mean, are. There's different versions of Brainiac, but I think in just, you know, making it easier for a film franchise, making it a Kryptonian AI. Yeah. That is like I'm still around, and my and my directive is to save Krypton, and so that's why I took Candor. If you even wanted to do that, but you don't have to. You can just be a Kryptonian AI. Do you know? What? I had the thought. Oh, I'm on the train right up here. You know how the you know how the all the the software for some reason for all of the Kryptonian information was in a skull, right? Do you think that's why their AI is called Brainiac? Because it's inside of a skull. Ooh, do you think that's a weird little Easter egg? That's cool, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's I cool. I was like, why is it a skull? Well, the robot is called Brainiac, and that isn't a head. So, And you know where that head is now? It's inside Clark. Wouldn't that be interesting? Oh, that's, yeah. You're welcome, seven years too late. Born and Brothers... <laughs> good job dude high five Woo. we nailed it we did it we did it this one was this one was this was the, this was one for the books there was one for the books wasn't it yep indeed <laughs> oh wow have we really been okay we, should, over, wrap, we, we should, should wrap we should wrap this up almost two hours <laughs> well, I'm not surprised well I'm not surprised either okay okay thank, thank you guys so much for listening we did it we fixed it can you believe it uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're catching this on YouTube, uh, welcome to the previewed uh, main channel, everybody. Hurrah, hurroo. Um, if you liked this show and you're new to uh, this show via the YouTube channel, if you would like to subscribe to the audio format, um, it's honestly, it's my favorite way to ingest the show personally. And Brian does just such a wonderful job he editing. He does, he does a really does killer job. job. Yeah. Uh, but if you'd like to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you catch your your, uh, your podcasts, that would be amazing. But also, you know, if you're just a YouTube person, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, yeah. hit that bell. Do that YouTube that you do so well. Guacamole's Extra, you podcast listening weirdos, you. Um, this has been Fix It. We fixed it. And as we end every single one of these episodes, heartbreak feels good in a place like this. Uh, it's the slow floating uh, Kryptonian spear that you don't see coming. Huh, I'm gonna get you. And I- She's a spear expert, you know. She could have just. We lost the background. We lost the background. Even the, the computer's the last, like, you guys have been going for two hours. Of the podcast. You're killing me right now, Smiles. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.